So good morning, everyone. We'll uh, call this uh, historic meeting of the Joint Antelope Valley Authority uh, to order on July 14th, 2016. Uh, the uh, first meeting of the Java Board was May 5th, 2000. So we're, uh, we're uh, going to be finishing up that job today. Um, the, uh, this, this, we hope, we assume all of our resolutions passed. This will be our final meeting. And, um, uh, but welcome all of you today. Uh, many of you have had a variety of different roles over the many, many years of the project and the life of Java and the life of the Antelope Valley Project and are very instrumental in making sure the project got built the way it got built, got completed, and uh, is, is being a, a, a major asset to the whole community and to the state today. Um, couple of items uh, at the beginning here um, we would like you to sign in if you have not signed in at some point here during uh, uh, during today's uh, meeting uh, there are pins over here uh, that kind of commemorate uh, the final uh, when the Antelope Valley project was being started there was a pin at essentially about the first meeting uh, developed a green one with an antelope on it uh, many some of us I still have those pins hanging around. Um, and the first presentation that was really made to city council on the project, uh, the presentation title was Imagine. And uh, that was used through, uh, throughout the project to try and help people visualize and understand what the project uh, ultimately could be. And so we took that same title and put it on the new pins, envisioned, or, uh, uh, and then uh, created. So um, I think that's uh, kind of where that title came from. Um, that's the first thing. Uh, Amy, would you call the roll, please? Johnson. Present. Jackson. Present. Esposito. Present. Okay. And the first item of business is approval of minutes from the September 10th, 2015 board meeting. So moved. Okay. Second. second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Amy, would you call the roll, please? Jackson or Johnson? Excuse me. Yes. Jackson. Yes. Esposito. Yes. Okay. Uh, next, we'll have some staff reports. Um, okay, Chris. Good morning, Chris Humphrey. I'm the Animal Valley Project Manager. And uh, to begin my staff report, I want to kind of expand on Glenn's Imagine theme. So I'm going to put my white gloves on and get out our Antelope Valley newspaper <laughs> from 2000 and redo the first couple paragraphs here. Imag oh, I need my glasses almost. <laughs> Imagine a beautifully landscaped waterway flowing along the east edge of downtown with outdoor cafes, shops, and a small weekend band playing in the new linear park. Commuter and, and recreational bicyclists pedal along the waterways, attractive banks as part of a new downtown university bike trail. Over 800 homes and 200 businesses are now saved from the Antelope Creek designated 100-year flood event. Neighborhoods in Malone, Clinton, and North Bottoms experience less drive through traffic. Two blocks away, cars travel on a new landscape boulevard along the east edge of the downtown university area and then pass over the railroad tracks near the Bob Devaney Center that used to block Lincoln traffic five out of 24 hours every day. The nine miles of new roadways provide newer and faster ways to travel from the historic city center to northern and northeastern Lincoln. I'm happy to report that that vision has been successfully accomplished and all the projects under Java's authority are successfully completed. More on a personal note, I want to thank the Java Board and a lot of the people in this room just for their dedication to the project and especially Glenn and Roger who stayed the course of this project through decades of it. Here, here. <laughs> for Amy who is 
never missed a Java board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, similar to trees being planted for future generations, this project really benefits the future generations by allevi alleviating the flooding, which we have seen over the last few years. Um, just to give everybody a reminder, a good reminder is this retaining wall across the street where the apartment complex is. If this project wasn't developed, that flood would have been up to the top of that wall out there. And all of this would have been flooded. So it's a good reminder of what uh, the flooding component benefit is of this project. Um, we've improved transportation in the area, and of course the redevelopment opportunities are, are here as well. The original contract with PB was signed back in 1995. That was one year after I graduated college. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no clue what was coming along here. I remember taking our nuke test in the rock lot just uh, east of Sandoz. I now have a son in college right now. <laughs> so the next generation is already starting to see the benefits of this project and his generation thanks you. Um, and I look forward to the future changes that the future generations will have with this, especially as the redevelopment continues along here with projects such as the Telegraph Bank, uh, District. So I thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Good morning. I'm Wynne Yermstead with the City's Urban Development Department. I'm the City's Community Development Manager and have been the City Project Manager for a number of the revitalization projects in Antelope Valley. And I really have just one question for you. If Antelope Valley is done, why are we so busy? <laughs> um, Antelope Valley, one of the things that I, I say over and over again about Antelope Valley, one of the things that made it so unique was the inclusion of community revitalization and including the people that live in the area, that work in the area, that have a stake in the area. Um, rather than it being a top-down engineering and planning professionals, good intention people coming up with the ideas of things that would happen. So much of it really was from the ground up, and I know that's, that grassroots term is so overused, but that really was what happened with Antelope Valley. I thought by now somebody would have mentioned the over 1,500 public meetings that were held <laughs> in the course of planning Antelope Valley. Um, it's hard to put, as you've over the years with Java, have had spreadsheets and spreadsheets um, looking at the investments that have occurred for transportation and stormwater. It's hard to do that with community revitalization because the expenditures are so different. Um, I think that the two legs of the stool are done, the transportation and the stormwater, but the community revitalization part of it is really just getting going. Um, and that's why we're so busy. Um, there were projects that were considered community revitalization in Antelope Valley that urban development didn't oversee, that were parks, primarily parks and rec, um, some um, public works as well. but right outside our door here. Um, Union Plaza Park is just, you know, the crown jewel of, of Antelope Valley. All the trails, the completion of the trail system. Um, Fleming Fields, the, the new park that, well now it's not so new. I keep calling it the new park, but it's not so new anymore. Um, I'm going to just briefly mention some of the accomplishments in community revitalization, and I sort of divided them up before, in terms of before the floodplain was gone and after the floodplain was gone. Um, um, between 1998 and 2012, there's been approximately $20 million, there was approximately $20 million invested in community revitalization, which equals about a little over a million dollars a year. About half of that was public money, mostly federal dollars, some tax increment financing, and about 10 million of it was private investment. In the last three and a half years, since the floodplain has been gone, to check my notes so I get the number right, um, there's been, so 20 million in 14 years. In three and, a half, three and a half years, there's been total reinvestment in community revitalization of $139 million in three and a half years. Um, and about 
Eleven percent of that was public. All the rest of that is private investment. Um, the early years we did what we called the closer to home strategy. Some of you will remember that. And that came from the neighborhood people that said, we want, the, these are the improvements we want to see that are close to our homes. So there were things like rocking alleys, fixing sidewalks. Um, we did curb replacement. I'm looking at Mickey. We did curb <laughs> replacement, some, some street resurfacing. Um, housing programs. We did housing programs for existing um, residents at that time. Um, we did neighborhood signs. We did neighborhood um, lighting projects. All of those things that were close to people's homes. Um, we did some projects on North 27th Street that we called sister projects to North 27th or to Antelope Valley because the planning, the, the needs were identified in the Antelope Valley planning process. Um, the Northbridge Community Center, people wanted to see a wraparound services center. Well, that's what happened with Northbridge. Um, the People's Health Center, um, people that lived in the area said, we, need, we don't have any health <coughs> facilities here. So the People's Health Center grew out of that. Um, and then these last, so that was all pre-floodplain removal. Since the floodplain has come out, um, the first one was right next door here, Assurity, was really the first big project that came out of it. And I, I won't go through these, there's been about seven of them, but the big one now is, as Chris mentioned, the Telegraph District, um, 21st and N. And I tell you, when that, and it started, it's underway now, um, but when that thing is done, that we're really gonna look at that and go, wow, that's Antelope Valley. None of that could have been done without Antelope Valley. Um, no, the, all the community revitalization efforts that have happened since the floodplain went away are entirely because that floodplain is gone, and that was what Antelope Valley was all about. Um, one just one last comment was one of the concerns that we heard a lot was in as far as community revitalization was the concern with gentrification and what would happen to the people that were living here that would be displaced because of the channel or the the new transportation. Um, there were about 44 residential units that that were acquired people that were displaced because of of the first two stools um, we have not and I won't count the student housing that's taken place but um, non-student housing we've replaced 60 units so far um, and of those no 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 I did that wrong we've replaced 60 apartments have been replaced and that is um, and they are all low income low income housing so the concern with affordable housing we address that with the apartments for home ownership we've replaced 68 units um, and about two-thirds of those are considered affordable and those are just projects that the city has been involved in directly there has been neighbor works um, Terry started it and uh, Mike is here they have continued to do housing projects in the area so we have seen home ownership and affordable housing but also market rate housing occurring as well so um, I guess to to conclude Antelope Valley the two stools are done the third stool is just getting going and we when we were working on on all the planning for Antelope Valley we said the revitalization piece of it would probably be 20 years well if you look at what's really started to happen once that floodplain went away we're only three and a half years into it and look at all that's been accomplished so far so the vision of those of you that have been included or have been here since the beginning and as well as those of you that have continued um, boy you just drive around and you see what a difference you have made so thank you the <laughs> staff reports. I think it's Kurt here to present is the audit. Is that the it wasn't on the agenda, but if okay. you want him to, okay. Just will note that we do have have received our final. Uh, audit report for the years 2014 and 2015 so um, financially closing everything out also any other staff reports if not uh, the next one is uh, agenda item is disposition of property a review of uh, the uh, 
getting rid of everything that was <laughs> yeah so now you acquired. get to hear from the lawyer um, <laughs> it, it really has been a privilege to help get the paperwork done um, more than 20 years the first contract was 1995 I think for uh, planning um, certainly the leadership of Glenn and Roger in particular but a lot of folks that uh, aren't even in this room but Alan and Colleen Don many mayors there's been presidents from Dennis Smith to JB Milliken our chancellors Harvey Perlman and now Ronnie Green this project if you'll remember had a legal challenge to start with and Steve Seglin and Kent Seacrest and Dick Wood uh, who worked on this project initially we said this group was needed the right people around the table to get this project done and that was at a time when this was that vision we got a few eye rolls right uh, when we started talking about this in the early 90s but changing the eye rolls into let's <coughs> let's roll is what this board was about <laughs> and the authenticity and credibility the leaders gave this project made it happen and embodied with leaders such as you particularly Glenn who's been at this since the very beginning and Roger as well but it was so steady your hand your guidance your leadership that made such a difference you hired good project managers like Wayne Teton and Chris Humphrey and had them marshal this big project had people like uh, Clint Thomas help with the acquisition and the paperwork to acquire property and do the right-of-way so that's the agenda item right now is what are we doing with all this property well luckily uh, the lawyers thought about that early on uh, so as you know the Fleming fields have an operating agreement with the university for the rec fields in the city uh, the city is the primary landowner for all of the, the land that includes the right-of-way and the underlying land with the channel there's a separate operating agreement with the lower Platte South NRD uh, related to the channel and the flood protection <clears throat> but in my summary which I used to prepare all these legal documents that's a long list of projects and if you go through it you will see federal state and local project numbers that's what made this project special that's what created the need for a group like this to keep focused and to get this done over really a 20-year period of time uh, it, it is an impressive accomplishment but the credibility the authenticity that this project had partly is because of the underlying institutions and organizations behind them uh, the city of Lincoln the University of Nebraska Lincoln and the lower Platte South NRD which goes to prove the only thing better than a credible and accountable public organization is three of them working together so good for you really appreciate it so the other question that came up on the property disposition we've got some permanent easements out there that were recorded in the name of Java which after today will no longer exist so what do we do well there's this magic language that the lawyers love it's called successors and assigns and that's in every <laughs> permanent easement that Java ever had the successor and assign and we've got this covered in the paperwork is the city of Lincoln and that will include some utility easements that are still held in Java's name out there in the permanent easement world uh, so the land lawyers can be assured what we have in place for all of the property is based on the assumption the city of Lincoln owns the right-of-way and the underlying real estate in the channel there's operating agreements for Fleming Park and for the waterway but bottom line the city of Lincoln has the easement as successors and assigns to Java so that's the the word from the lawyer on the property disposition any questions any questions no, well, very good all Thank right all. I think I'm up for the next okay. one which is the <laughs> ultimate resolution um, so in that let's roll get her done mode <laughs> once this is signed we're done and you will dissolve not only this entity known as Java but the interlocal agreement which was started in 2000 and amended in 2001 all of those are terminated by your action that was provided in the interlocal agreement 
It, ha it takes a 100% vote, so if there's any dissent today, it won't happen. But I'm guessing uh, <laughs> the certificates of completion really did resolve all of the questions. So you did that uh, by resolution, um, took care of all of the waterway projects, the transportation projects, and the community revitalization projects. There's a completion certificate for each of those. Uh, it was officially requested by the mayor. Uh, mayor Chris Beitler has signed off on those. I'm sure Mayor Wesley and Mayor Singh uh, over time have done their part uh, in terms of getting some of these signed off on. But we've had other mayors and officials sign off on periodically things that we've done. The Board of Regents signed off uh, for the university on the Fleming Fields when we completed that in 2007. That functionally took Java out of the picture there even though they signed the improvement agreement. So bottom line, I've got a resolution. I'm going to ask you to vote on it, but you will sign it today. That resolves that riddle that lawyers like to think about. How do you vote on something and then get minutes approved later after you're dissolved? Doesn't matter. You're going to sign a resolution. <laughs> But with that, if there's any questions on the resolution, I do have all the certificates of completion attached to this, which is just nice, and our affidavit of publication according to the interlocal agreement that this meeting was called to dissolve the interlocal agreement and the entity known as Java. And again, it's been my pleasure helping Java get this done. Very good. Can't, you're here just in time to, to watch us unravel the agreement and throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution uh, authorizing the complete <clears throat> termination of the Java interlocal agreement and the dissolution of Java? So moved. Seconded. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Amy, please call the roll. Johnson. Yes. Jackson. Yes. Esposito. Yes. 100%. 100%. Very good. <laughs> You get to sign. Mention was made uh, by Chris uh, of Amy, and Amy, we have something for you. Uh, a couple things. One is something you can hang on your wall, uh, thanking you for your perfect attendance. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the card? Yeah. yeah. We have a little card for you. We also have a card for you, too. Wow. Thank you, you very Java, much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate She's it. done a very great job for us. Thank you. For all of us. Thank you. <laughs> Any other business before cookies? <laughs> if not, we're adjourned. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.